For the price point, these really surprised me. These are the Easy SMX T39 and T39 Pro. Now there's a reason why I'm doing these together in the same video and that's because they are identical other than the fact that the Pro version actually has NFC. So if NFC is your thing, this is the one you want to go for. However, if you're not overly fussed or you're like me and you've got all your Amiibos boxed up still, <laughs> the T39 just here doesn't have NFC and it does affect the price. So price wise, the T39 here comes in in the UK at 22 pounds. That is ridiculously cheap. And I would, ugh, I just can't get over how good these are for the price point, it's ridiculous. And this one, the Pro variant is five pounds more at 27 pounds. So in the US, this one will be around $25, I reckon. And this one will be 30 to $35, somewhere around that. So let's go over the specs and everything. These do come in various colors and you can get the same colors in either the Pro version or not. So we've got the like silvery white one just here and then the like silvery blue gradient as well just here Which is the pro version. This is the one I've been mainly using to be honest just because why not it's the pro version <laughs> Even though I haven't been testing NFC's so these have wake from sleep and I'll demonstrate that now for you you just press it once, once it's already connected, and boom, there we go. They've got Hall Effect Sensing joysticks, which for a budget controller as cheap as this is absolutely brilliant. You've got NFC in the Pro, not in the non-Pro. We've got a programmable button just here, which acts as either a macro record, and I'm pretty sure you get 60 seconds rather than like a button input amount, or you can do a button swap, so like a, a single button assign to this little button on the front. And straight up, I was like, okay, why is it on the front and not on the back? And I suppose it's because some people will find that they accidentally press them or people just don't want them at all and just end up not assigning back paddles. So what Easy SMX have done is gone, you know what, let's just put a button on the front. Fair enough, they're doing something different. We've got six axis motion control as well. And you can see Mario just there if I keep shaking this. That's the uh, gyro built in. We've got an actual Switch layout because this is aimed at the Nintendo Switch. But of course, this is a Bluetooth controller, so you could use it on something else if you so wish. We've got four adjustable levels of rumble as well. And I'm pretty sure zero counts as one. So three levels of rumble, but four if you count zero. And we do have these as well. And now I'm not sure if these are analog log triggers or not because I've not tested this on anything other than the Nintendo Switch. Feels like it, it's got a massive throw on it. But yeah, it does input as a digital trigger, of course, because it's the Nintendo Switch. And that's pretty much all the specs. I got a bit sidetracked there with the triggers and we'll go into that a little bit more. So as you can see straight up, they are very specced out for the price point. I mean, at 22 pounds, that's what, like $25, that is a lot of spec. Like that, that really is a lot of spec. Now let's just go over what they look like. Now for me, I feel like it looks like an Xbox 360 controller. Is it just me? Is it just me, anyone else? You know, and I think it's because of this swooped down like curvature like of the controller and this this bit at the top there. I just feel like it's reminiscent of the uh, Xbox 360, but you know, <laughs> it is their own design and I do commend Easy SMX for doing their own thing, you know? It doesn't always have to be a copy of a Switch Pro controller or an Xbox controller or a PS5 controller, whatever. I do quite dig it. We've got this kind of like double wrapped thing going on. So if you think it looks like it's covered in like a transparent shell, well, then you're not wrong because that's actually what they've done. They've taken their controller and then put like a transparent shell around it for protection I guess and for kids and stuff this is going to be brilliant because you're not going to be ruining the paint job underneath and it is like a metallic gradient you know you might see it a little bit better with the uh, the white one that goes into like a silver and that's really nice and obviously this transparent protection is going to protect that so you're not going to scratch the paint or anything like that or if you've got an animal or something that's going to like bite it yeah you're going to get scratches and stuff but it's not going to ruin the paint and i have to say i love the feel of it it's like a strange like matte sort of finish on it and it's it's not glossy it's not fingerprint magnet it's it's really nice <laughs> like weirdly nice i'm sure you'll be able to take it off they say that you can't but i mean it's just some screws right but i'd advise you leave it on because it looks like the transparent plate here is actually the joystick gates that are protecting the joystick and making sure you don't overthrow them we've got on the back nothing really there's not really anything going on on the back no back paddles or anything like that but we do have some nice 
ergonomic handles here with the horns that come down and it fits lovely in the hands like it fits really nice it's got this nice big exaggerated arrow shape which really you know gets your thumb onto that asymmetrical joystick perfectly like this it fits in my hands really nice i don't have a problem with the ergonomic grip and yeah i, I like it a lot but then we've got the easy smx logo which is the home button then we've got screenshot over on the right instead of the left like you'd find on the Nintendo Switch. Then we've got T for turbo, then minus, and then plus. So we've got like this V sort of configuration going on just here. But let's go over the feel of the face buttons before we go any further. So straight away, the face buttons actually like feel nice. You know, I do like the feel of the face buttons. They don't protrude loads, but they definitely do protrude, but they're all consistent. They are just membrane buttons. So there's no mechanical or anything like that going on here, but they feel nice. I do like that. They're not overly mushy or spongy. There's a little bit of extra sort of post travel when you press them but to be honest when you're just using it normally you you don't really notice it they're, they they return quickly they're actually quite nice then we've got the bumpers now i do feel like there's a bit more travel on the edges than at the top so they seem to be on a sprung you know sort of system just there so if you press at the top there's like little to no travel going on on the sides there's a little bit of travel going on then we've got these which are those big triggers that i was talking about and yeah they input as a digital trigger so bear that in mind obviously but they're nice you know they they move a lot but that's probably because I'm so used to a digital trigger that's more like the bumpers on a Nintendo Switch controller that I'm not used to having like this huge throw, but they do input. If you look at Mario just there, if I barely touch it, it's almost like a hair trigger, you know, it just goes straight away into it. And then we get the D-pad, which for the price of this controller is a really good D-pad. Like it's not clicky or crunchy. It's not mushy. It just works. Like it's really, really nice. I actually like it a lot. It's got a big concave on it. So you've got a big sort of concave going on to the, uh, the actual sort of dome of the D-pad going into the center there. And yeah, it feels nice. You know, I like it again for the price point. You cannot grumble. It's a lot better than some of the controllers I've tested that are a lot more expensive than this one. <laughs> and this is a really cheap controller and it's got a good D-pad. That's not all either. So, you know, normally you'd do a D-pad test of, right, let's see how much it sort of interferes if I rock left and right. So I'm just holding down. If I go left, oh look, he's moving left. If I go right, oh look, he's moving right. And some people are like, yeah, I don't want that movement or yes, I do. And obviously this is a an eight way D-pad, right? So he's gonna move left and right if you rock it, but Easy SMX have got you covered because they've locked it out to a four-way D-pad if you so wish. And all you have to do is press the T for turbo button for I think five seconds. Uh, there we go, he's vibrated. And now look, I can rock that D-pad and Mario is not going anywhere. So you can absolutely have this as an eight, uh, a four-way or an eight-way D-pad, which can help with stuff like Mario, you know, like anything that you wanna be super precise and you're not going to accidentally overshoot, then this D-pad can do that. <laughs> and it's a budget controller. Not even some of the pro controllers I've tried have this feature. We also have turbo. So T is obviously for turbo. Let's just do it on jump. So press T and B. And now when I hold it, Mario is just gonna jump for me and get really tired whilst I hold this button, right? And if I press T and B again, now Mario is just gonna do it for me and I can go away and do what I want and come back and Mario is still gonna be jumping rope or whatever he's doing just here. And if I press T and B again, it's now canceled it out. And now that strangely placed macro button. So we've got the macro button on the front and we can do a couple of things with this. So I'm going to show you button swap first. So I'm gonna take Mario's jump, for example, and put it to this button here on the front. Now to set it, you don't just hold that. You've gotta actually hold it and turbo at the same time and you do it for three seconds. That's now gonna like flash around. I'm gonna press B once and press that. And that's now assigned to the macro button. So now I'm going to press the macro button and you can see Mario jumps, but if I hold it, oh look, he jumps really high. And that means this has true button swap, which means that 
you know, you could do a short input and it will do it, or you can do a long input and it will recreate that as well. Some controllers of the past, we're seeing it less and less nowadays, but I still talk about it. Some controllers don't allow true button swap where it just basically records a one second of you pressing that button. So if you needed to press and hold to get Jar Mario, Jario? Who the hell is Jario? If you needed Mario to jump like really far, and you didn't have true button swap, and you'd only recorded like a single press like that, you'd never be able to get them to jump without going back to the original button. This does around that because you can do a short jump or a long jump, you can actually reassign a button to that. How practical that is just here, I mean, I don't know. If I wanna cancel that, I'm gonna press turbo and the macro button again. I'm gonna hold it until it flashes and press it once and now it's redundant, right? But you can do a 60 second record and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So you hold the button, hold T, like so. It's flashing. I'm going to go left, right, jump. I'm going to go jump, jump. I'm going to pull the trigger down and again. Um, and yeah, let's just do whatever. There we go. And I'm going to press it. Now I'm going to press that button and he's going to do that action for me. And he's going to play out that entire thing which is gonna be 60 seconds worth of input, he's gonna replay, right, and then stop. However, this does actually also let you assign turbo to that macro recording. So you can replay up to 60 seconds indefinitely, or just keep doing it and doing it and do it. And how you do that, you record your macro first, then you press the macro button and screenshot at the same time, yeah, it's gonna save a video, but you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna hold the controller up because it's vibrating everywhere. But basically, Mario's now just gonna run around like he's being mind controlled for ever, basically. He's just gonna keep doing it and 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 doing it. So if that's something you're wanting, this absolutely does have that. Now, if you wanna cancel that, it's the macro button and the screenshot button again, and he will just play it around the last time and then stop. And there we go. And of course we've got four levels of adjustable rumble and it's pretty easy to do, to be honest. You just press T and you go up or down or down or down. The rumble is actually nice. You know, <laughs> again, for a budget controller, this is nicer than quite a lot of rumble I've tried before. I hate the tinny, real high, like kind of rumble, it's horrible. I much prefer a low, nice, wide, heavy rumble that actually feels like, I don't know, you haven't got bees in your hand or something, right? And this has that, I actually like that. Even on full, full is a little bit insane, you know, like it's a little bit intense, um, but it is actually nice, you know? So I've been rocking it with uh, one down, so like 75%, whatever it actually is. I think it's 75%. It makes it a bit weightier. It slows the motors down, so it, it makes it like a little bit heavier, that rumble. And finally, I'll put it on the table just to see if you can hear it uh, here as well. And of course, we've got Hall Effect Sensing Joysticks, which means you're not gonna get drift which is ridiculous because these use magnets instead of friction. It's just better. I mean, Dreamcast been using it since like late 90s, early 2000s, and then no one did it anymore for some weird reason. And now it's become a thing again. And now we're seeing these which have a quicker response rate. They have lower dead zone. And of course, much, 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 much greater chance of no drift, essentially. And it's in a budget controller, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Like a controller this price, and it's got all of these features. It's insane. I've not had any issue with these joysticks at all. They're really good. I'd recommend this controller highly. I really, I really do. Like for the price point, especially the T39, if you need NFC, go for the Pro. But like for someone like me that doesn't use NFC, like at 22 pounds, this is ridiculous, like $25. I saw this in an Amazon sale the other day for 14 pounds. That's like $15-ish, right? That's insane. That is insane. The build quality of this thing is really good. The thing is, when I was actually started using these, I, I got sent these and I just immediately started using them without looking at any information or anything at all. I just went, all right, let's charge them up, start testing them. I was like, I actually kind of like these, you know, like everything seems good. I don't actually have anything bad to say about it. The only thing I could say maybe for some people is the placement of that macro button's a little bit strange, but I know there's plenty of people that don't want them on the back. So this is winning for those people. But I was using this and I was like oh you know what I actually think this is really good and in my mind I'm thinking right okay I'm thinking $40 $45 you know for, for a controller 
as good as this, right? And then when I saw the price at like $25, 22 pounds, I couldn't believe it. It was like $20 or 20 pounds less than I actually anticipated. And that's just me being honest. I, I can't believe how well these work for the price point. I, I just can't wrap my head around it. So I definitely recommend if you've got children or anything like that and you want a spare controller or even a main controller, if you don't have a pro controller yet, just get one of these, like a T39. Brilliant for the price point, especially if you can get them on sale absolutely winning by a couple of them and then you've got a spare but yeah for children brilliant but for adults as well you know if you're looking for a hall effect sensing controller which has everything else as well this is just a brilliant controller i, I don't know what else i can say about it i really can't so hopefully you've enjoyed today's video if you have and you like these controllers or you've got one or whatever let me know down in the comments whilst down there like this video and subscribe we do have membership open as well that lets you see these videos early and also opens up our private discord as well so you can come and talk to me talk to aj talk to everyone else ask us questions whatever and obviously if you want to see more of me and you don't want to watch me on this channel then check me and aj out on the podcast over here where we talk about all things gaming check out another budget controller from me down here not from me like me reviewing it i didn't make it but <laughs> whatever bye